Here he comes, here he comes. There's the trumpets, there's the drums, here he comes. Hop along, Cassidy, here he comes. I was returning to the bar 20 with my pal Red Connors. We'd been gone longer than I expected, so ran completely out of food. As usual, Red was hungry and complaining. Rather than make him wait until we'd get home at dark, I decided to swing past Clarksville, a ghost town. Titus Clark, owner of the town and an old friend of mine, was its sole survivor. A bad epidemic had hit some years before, and everyone either died or had left. Red said he didn't care how many people lived there as long as there was some food. like the weeds are taking over the town. Yeah, it sure does. Gophers starve to death here. I don't know. It looks like the gophers have done pretty well. Come on, let's find Titus. <laughs> what are you so jumpy about? This is a nice, peaceful place. Where's the food? In here. Come on. Sure, this guy's a good friend of yours? Well, I've always thought so. There's something funny about this. Let's go take a look. Take it easy, then. Find anything? Not a thing. Ah, come on. Bobby. Yeah? I think I'm losing my appetite. No. That's too bad. This is Titus's room. sole survivor. I'm not so sure. Remember the greeting we got out there? Yeah. Say, maybe... You might as well take care of the horses. You... Go ahead. Killed him. It's a 
bullet from a 3030 Winchester. See, Hoppy, don't you think we ought to turn this over to a sheriff? Yeah, I guess we should. You better ride over the railhead. It's about 10 miles east of here. Sheriff's name is Gordon. All right. And I can get myself some food with it. Wait a minute. You notice anything here? Yeah, food. Not the food. The way the table's set up. Oh. Titus has had a guest and not too long ago, from the looks of this. Hey, it's two plates. Yeah. your supplies and mail. Hey, you kind of scared me. <laughs> I'm Fred Loomis. I ain't used to seeing anybody around here except old Titus. Howdy, Mr. Loomis. My name's Cassidy. This is Red Connors. Howdy. You friends of Mr. Clark's? Well, uh, yeah. How often do you deliver supplies around here? Oh, about every four weeks. He gives me a list of supplies he needs at the railhead, and I fetch him in for him. His mail, too. Titus is dead. No. Hart finally got him, huh? Not his heart, Mr. Loomis. This. In the bank. Well, who would want to do a thing now, like that's that? That's what we're going to find out. You find him like this? Yeah, except that he was on his face. I dug this out of the wall over there. It's a bullet from a 30-30 Winchester. Poor old Coot didn't have any money. I know he didn't have any enemies. Nobody disliked him enough to kill him. Oh, you're right about that. But somebody liked him well enough to eat with him. My golly, you're right. You any idea who his guest could have been? I didn't think nobody ever ate with him except me. How long ago you reckon it happened? Oh, two, maybe three hours ago. See anybody when you rode in? No. But just as we were coming... Uh, not a soul. Beats me. Somebody ought to get Sheriff Gordon and Titus' niece. I'd do it for you, only I just came from the railhead, and I'm going in the other direction. I gotta finish making my deliveries. Ah, uh, that's all right. Thanks, just the same. Red was just going for the sheriff when you drove up. Yeah, I'd better get started. Well, I'm glad I met you, Mr. Loomis. I'll see you later, Hobby. Right. Well, I'll be going along, too. I'll leave the fiddles, but I guess I ought to take his mail back to the post office. Oh, I'll give this to the sheriff. Suits me, Mr. Cassidy. She's the only one ever wrote to him. She? Yeah, that lawyer niece of his. Oh, I see. By the way, what's the big X on you? Oh, that's a special code of mine. I put two X's on Mr. Smith's and one X on Titus, and it makes it easy to load and unload the wagon. I don't have to fumble around looking for names. I see. Well, I guess you want to get going. Well, I'll be glad to stick around if you need me. Oh, no, that's all right. You go right ahead. Well, I'll see you on my way back tomorrow. Fine. The sheriff will be interested in anybody with a 30-30. I got one. Yeah, I saw it on your wagon seat. Well, so long. So long. I didn't get much sleep that night, and the following morning I went out to look around. The examination of papers and letters in Titus's desk made me pretty sure of a motive for the murder. I was anxious to see how Carol Madden would take the news of her uncle's death. A woman lawyer, first one I'd heard of in our part of the country. I remembered Titus speaking of the girl, and as I recall, there wasn't much love lost between them.
Drop that rifle. I was glad to see my old friend, Sheriff Gordon. He introduced me to the other two. The girl was Carol Madden, Titus's niece. She seemed visibly affected by the news of her uncle's murder and offered to do anything she could to capture the guilty party. Dick Madden was her husband. They had been married a year. Dick, an arrogant Easterner, wasn't the kind of fellow you'd cotton to quickly. I didn't think he cared whether his wife's uncle had been murdered or lived to be a hundred. I told him they'd better come over to the hotel. Neither Dick or Carol wanted to see the body, so I told them to make themselves as comfortable as possible in the lobby. I took the sheriff into Titus's room to bring him up to date on events and ask him some questions about the dead man's affairs. Later, we came back to the street. The sheriff and I had exchanged views on the case. He couldn't help me much as to the identity of the mysterious ambusher. But we had a definite motive for the killing. Well, I guess the next thing is to have a talk with Carol. Yeah, she must know what's been going on. Why, sure. Her being a lawyer and that airy husband of hers being a civil engineer had a perfect setup. <laughs> Got it all figured out, huh, Red? Why, it's as plain as day to a half-wit jackrabbit. And Mr. Madden had a 30-30 Winchester. Didn't you see it on his horse? Get up! Where you shoot? Come on! Stands there, I must have nicked him. Well, that's better. Maybe it'll be easier to find him. We'll have another look around. We've searched every one of these buildings with a fine tooth cone. We couldn't find him. He sure got a good hiding place. Maybe he digs a hole and pulls it in after him. <laughs> well, we got some boot prints here. Maybe we can follow them. Should be some more blood stains, too. Who's doing the shooting? I yeah, wish we knew. He, he... Hold it, Brett. You two go back to the hotel. We can handle it. Once more, we searched the town carefully. We found lots of boot prints, but they led us nowhere. And no more bloodstains. Yes, Titus started a couple of wells, but he could never go deep enough to get any real water. I fail to see what this town's water supply has to do with murder. I feel sure that it has a great deal to do with it. Well, my uncle had the water hauled in. But like my husband said, what's that got to do with the case? Oh, I'm sorry I mentioned it. But we'll get on with some other things. You were pretty sure that this property was going to be worth something, weren't you? What do you mean? Mrs. Madden, you were your uncle's attorney. You were handling the negotiations for the railroad company to buy this town. That's right. My wife knew that. She was waiting for the railroad to agree to Clark's terms. The freighter brought this letter in yesterday. In it, the railroad agreed to your uncle's terms. He was to retain certain properties along the railroad right away, which would be worth a great deal of money. They agreed to dig several deep wells for water. You've just eliminated us as suspects. Yes. We didn't know the railroad had accepted the terms. This letter came direct to Clark. Well, that's true. But they also sent a copy of that letter to your wife's office. That's strange. I hadn't received it up until the time I left. Now, look here, Cassidy. This has gone far enough. I resent your suspicions. You're getting a little ahead of yourself. Am I? You've got it all figured out. I work for the railroad company. My wife represented her uncle. Naturally, I knew that the railroad planned to extend their main line. I own a 30-30 Winchester rifle. 
When you investigate further, you'll find that I suggested the purchase of this property to the railroad officials. So, I came quietly to Clarksville and murdered my wife's uncle. You can say that, Cassidy, but try to prove it. I have a perfect alibi for my time. Besides, how could I, or my wife, benefit by her uncle's death? How? Mrs. Madden, you're your uncle's only beneficiary, and you do this will for him. Carol, you didn't mention this to me. No, Dick. As far as I was concerned, this was just a worthless old town. Possibly good for firewood. I really didn't expect the railroad company to meet my uncle's terms. Copy. Yeah? But what about that other matter? The one you haven't mentioned. Oh, that's right. Uh, thanks, Sheriff. Have either of you heard Titus mention the rediscovery of the gold vein? The gold vein? That's right. Oh, that is ridiculous. Oh, I don't know. The Sheriff says he's mentioned it several times lately. I won't stand for any more questioning. If we're accused of murder, I demand that a formal charge be placed against us immediately. You're not going to be charged with anything for the time being. Now, may I suggest that you both help with the burial? the others went to bury Titus, I was determined to ferret out the hiding place of our mysterious friend, who seemed to possess the cunning of a pack rat. My search was interrupted by the return of the freighter. Loomis said he'd hurry back in in case there was anything he could do. His left arm was bandaged. In answer to my question, he said he'd torn his arm on a nail when he was unloading. He wanted to attend the burying of Titus and walked off to join the others. I retraced my steps to the hotel. I had to find the water supply. This was an old shed, apparently built as an afterthought. None of the barrels contained water, but I knew there was some near me. The place was cold and damp. Then I remembered an old trick of the Mexican people. I moved some boards on the floor and found what I had been searching for. Titus had dug a hole in the ground and sunk his water barrel in it. This kept the water cool and fresh. As I replaced the boards, I noticed something on the ground, blood stains. I knew I'd found the place where I'd meet our ambusher. My patience was rewarded. Some time later, an old man carrying a 30-30 Winchester entered. I let him get to the water before I spoke. So there you are. Go ahead, get your drink of water. I want to put my arm where you nick me. You want a recussion? Well, go on, get your water, then we'll see about fixing that arm while we talk. I ain't got nothing to say. Suppose we put it this way. I have something I want to say to you. Now, get your water. Oh. Hurry it up. That's enough. Come on. Although he was suffering, the old fellow didn't want me to touch his arm. His name was John Henderson. He was just a little touched. Not much background to him. He'd lived in Clarksville when it was a boom town. From time to time, he came back to visit Titus, an old friend. Henderson thought he could find the gold vein again, and Titus had promised him half of it. He'd been sleeping in a cellar under the general store. That's why we couldn't find him. He denied killing Titus and said he didn't have any idea who could have done it. Neither did he hear the shot that ended his friend's life. He admitted that he'd eaten with Titus and that was the last time he had seen him alive. Later, he'd found the dead body, then saw us riding in. He knew about Loomis coming through, but Loomis didn't know he was living in the town. 
When I asked him why he was taking pot shots at us, he said he didn't know but what we'd killed his friend. Besides, he didn't want any strangers around when the gold boom struck again. I assured him I was not interested in his dream of wealth. Cautious questioning revealed he didn't know anything about the railroad deal. I started outside to turn him over to the sheriff. Sheriff, here's our ambusher. John Henderson. Well, if you're not a sight for my sore eyes, what reason would you have for killing Titus? He says he didn't do it. Well, by golly, he could have at that. Stop lying. You didn't even know I was in town. Oh, I knew you was holed up here all along, Henderson. Well, you dirty oh, oh, I'm afraid I'm gonna... Well, we may as well get back home. There's not much more we can do. Yeah, I guess you might as well. Well, I suppose you'll go ahead with the railroad deal now that you own this town. Yes. What's this about Miss Carroll owning the town? Well, her uncle left her everything in his will. That ain't right. Why not? I'm supposed to get the town if anything happened to Titus. Oh, but that's not what it says in the will. No? Well, read this. It's in Titus' own handwriting, and it's all legal. He gave it to me to protect my interests. He must have known something was going to happen to him. He owed me a lot of money, and he said when the railroad came through, he'd pay me well. It says so right there. Well, this is Titus' handwriting, all right. And you're also right in assuming that he was afraid something was going to happen to him. That paper isn't legal. Yeah? Well, wait till I get to the railhead and I'll hire myself a real lawyer. You're gonna need one, Mr. Loomis. What are you talking about? It's too bad you never learned how to read. Who says I can't read? Well, if you could, you'd have never given me this. Listen to what it says. To whom it may concern, Fred Loomis plans to kill me. He knows about the railroad wanting to buy my property and has tried to force me to give him a bill of sale. I have not told him about my will in order to protect my niece, Carol Madden. Signed, Titus Clark. Well, Loomis? You're lying. Loomis, I knew you couldn't read yesterday when you gave me that envelope and said it was from Titus's niece. It was actually from the railroad. You're talking through your hat, mister. When the postmaster gives you letters, he tells you who they're for, and you put your own marks of identification on them. You're just guessing. No, no, Loomis. I went out on the road. I found out where you'd pulled your wagon off to one side. You got out and walked back into town. You shot Titus without Henderson even knowing you were here. Then you went back to the wagon. Then you drove back into town like nothing had happened. So, we're taking you in for murder. Oh, no, you ain't. Drop those guns. Give me that paper, Cassidy. Hand it over! This don't say nothing about Loomis threatening Titus. Doesn't? Well, maybe I'd better learn how to read. Oh, here it says, to whom it may concern, I owe Fred Loomis $9.63 for supplies, leastwise he claims I do. Should anything happen to me before I pay him, I want my heir, Carol Madden, to give him the $9.63 out of the money I leave her. Thank you, and it's signed, Titus Clark, right there. Sure it is. And the word is air, not hair. <laughs> Get in. Well, Red, when you come back through Clarksville, we'll have a restaurant open. No, thanks, ma'am. I don't think I'll be back. I know the food's good out at the bar 20. <laughs> <laughs> well, goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye, sir. Goodbye. So long, old timer. Hi there. Friends, this is the first time in the five years since you've been kind enough to invite me into your homes on television that I've taken the liberty of speaking to you personally. I would just like to assure you that any product you see Hoppy's name on in my mind, is the finest. Now, here's a little message from my little friends. 
Always mind your daddy and your mummy. Please remember, they're the best friends you have in the world. Till next week, take good care of yourselves. There goes on his way Down the moonlit trail to where cowboys reign Hop along Cassidy Hop along Cassidy He'll return soon again There's no use to say goodbye until then